and welcome to my new video so today i'm going to be doing another resto druid uh, healing discussion um that i previous i previously done one, one uh, previous episode about this so i'm basically continuing into 7.25 just to see how resto druid change how resto druids um are compared to other healers things like tier 19 tier 20 i'm i'm going to be discussing all of this with blixen hello everybody so I guess the first thing, I guess the most uh, frequent question that I, that at least is asked in the stream about Resto Druids is about tier 19 and tier 20. So a lot of people are uh, kind of confused uh, or just unsure about when to drop their tier 20. I mean, drop their tier 19 for tier 20. Is tier 20 actually worth using is tier 20 harder to manage and things like that um i don't know have you uh have you i don't know how how many tiers have you got uh, blixen i i actually haven't got enough um i actually haven't got tier 20 to actually really test it out completely but i know from ptr that uh, tier 20 game style is a lot well i want to say a lot harder I mean, tier 19 was basically no game style change. While with tier 20, we can see that there is a lot of micromanagement involved, especially if you're actually going to be using the Soul of the Forest, Soul of the Arch Druid, or Soul of the Forest, forest Ring. Um, so, uh, what was I going to say? I'm going to say with tier 19, you don't have to do anything. The basic question, like I can actually see on Discord, there's a couple of questions asked about this. When should I drop tier 19 to tier 20? And uh, the easiest answer, I guess, um, the easiest answer for this would be that you, will, if, if you have the possibility, you should never drop tier 19 and you should always basically run tier 19. But it is much easier to get the um, tier 20 high item level because what does is, what is Heroic, uh, Heroic Tumors of Gears drop? 915? Yep, 915 base. So it drops 915 base and like in the in, in Nightmare Nightmare in uh, Nighthold, what was it? I can't remember what it was like it was 905 or something like that there. So you have a much higher chance of getting tier 20 higher item level unless you go really lucky with the Nighthold loot. Like for example, I have a lot of 920 pieces. I have a couple of 910s. I have 910s. I have 910s with a socket. So for me to actually transition into tier 20 so you didn't see the my night hole gear but for me to actually transition to tier 20 i need to get like it has to be at least some item level upgrade over tier 19 so i have to get like 925 to 930 uh chest to replace my night hold ones i have to get like 915 or 920 cloak it has to be at least some change like you cannot just straight up swap to tier 20 without gaining any item levels because overall for most of the fights that's going to be a hps decrease you're going your st game style is going to actually change a lot and a lot of people really don't like that uh, i don't know how do you feel about like game style changes when it comes to uh, when it comes to tears do you enjoy yes. yeah generally i do like a little change in in between tiers but what they've done between tier 19 and tier 20 is pretty massive simply for the fact uh tier 19 there was no change in place out like you said all you had to do was rejuve and you're good to go that procs your tier 19. tier 20 it's all about seems to be all about the uptime of efflorescence and a lot of people really can't manage it that well because they don't have the skill to do so and that's not saying everybody there's just a lot of people that don't have that kind of micromanagement about them playing a video game or just flat don't care to make the best use out of tier 20 as possible yeah i, I actually i actually agree with that uh, i think a lot of people I guess it's different for people who actually rest of Jews who went into like 7.25 and they actually started re-rolled into resto druid at this time and they're like oh we got this we got this uh, tier set that i gotta pay much more attention to uh, efflorescence so just uh, an example like 
So I have the tier 20. As you can see, the tier 20 tier set is basically every time you swift man increases your fluorescence by 200% for 10 seconds. And the two set is like you're gonna you want to use swift man on lower health targets and you get a reduced cooldown. For my testing, it's like you need to heal a target below 10% HP to actually get that 40% reduction, which is the maximum. So you're most likely never going to get the for my member 40% will be around 18 seconds Swift Mend. Swift Mend originally is 30 seconds. If you use Prosperity Talent, it becomes 27 seconds. And if you use, and if you get 40% reduction on Prosperity Talent, it becomes like something like 16.2. Well, besides that, you're never going to get that 40% maximum reduction on tier 22 set. Uh, purely for the fact 10, 10%, a person who's 10% is going to be like fire and fume being far and few in between so it's more likely around 21 22 second uh, swift man so every time you swift man your effervescence is going to heal for much more so as an example you have fights like Gorot, you have fights like fallen avatar where people just keep like even mistress for example mistress that's actually a decent enough example as well even for like a mythic mistress the boss is actually constantly being navigated in like a center kind of, it's almost like a circle around the whole room just trying to dodge the tornadoes your efflorescence is going to be like it's going to be healing three people for around max like i don't know like five seconds sometimes sometimes even less it actually can be sometimes it can actually heal for 10 seconds but the pr point is after those 10 seconds it's going to disappear so technically you could actually make use of tier 24 set by just uh, swift mending and then aflor and fl placing a fluorescence on the melee which they're going to stand in around 10 seconds but then that means you're going to have to after about 22 23 seconds you're going to swift mend again and then place a fluorescence like a brand new fluorescence or close to it again so it's, it can be like a mana management tool but like like Blixen said I'm actually kind of wearing off the point here like Blixen said Efflorescence becomes such a big, there's such a big emphasis on efflorescence as a Resto Jude wearing tier 20 piece. I mean, from the logs that I've seen, like first of all, rejuvenation is always going to be one of your top heals. And uh, with with actually tier 20, efflorescence kind of can, depending very much on the fight, can kind of come close to rejuvenation. This is very depending on the fight. I, I would never really like to see efflorescence to take over rejuvenation. But there are specific cases where that actually can happen. Uh, so from out of nowhere, with tier, four, with tier 19 force, you have this spell that's going to be doing most of the healing. And like you can't really control it that much because you have to place it on the ground and kind of hope that people are going to stay there for 30 seconds. Otherwise, you have to remove it and waste mana on it. Swift Melt by itself is not really a, like a super mana efficient spell anyway. Um, and it has a long cooldown. But like Blixen said, for the new people, uh, I guess I, I'm actually not quite sure about this. For the new people who are coming into play Resto Druid and they get tier 20, they probably will be, be paying a lot of attention to efflorescence. While for someone who played with tier 19 four set, <laughs> like you're used to, you're used to such an easy game style where your wild gold gives you 4,000 mastery, your rejuvenation just gives you free rejuvenation without you without you having to think for anything, like. Uh, like at the start of the expansion, it was the meme spec build with the tier 19 four set, legendary shoulders. Even though legendary shoulders got nerfed, the synergy with rejuvenation was just insane. And then you actually were running germination. So the whole game style with tier 19 of the meme spec was just placing rejuvenation all the time. And now it kind of shifts to making sure your swift, making sure your fluorescence is placed somewhere close. Uh, to a target and swift mending the lowest possible target to get the most cooldown reduction and then kind of like on top of putting rejuvenations paying attention to how your fluorescence is doing paying attention if there are actually people standing in it you actually have to make sure like you, your point of view changes a lot more because you have to pay attention to where people are standing like i guess you can't really like tunnel as much as before so like on Gorot, uh, like i mean it's really not really a stacked up fight a lot of people a lot of people will go from from soaking to uh, what is it soaking the circles on left on behind the bus they spawn randomly so it's kind of like you have to make sure like oh um i have my fluorescence i put my swift man oh everyone's actually soaking the ball 
They're soaking the ball over there. I have my fluorescence here. Do I move it and uh, waste quite a bit of mana or do I just let it? Like most cases, if your mana permits you, you will have to move it. Even though if, it's, if you just placed it. If your mana permits, permits it, absolutely move it. Uh, absolutely move it. But that's just, uh, that's just like, that's just a big, big healing change from tier 19 to tier 20. I'm actually not quite sure if anyone else got such a big, uh, such a big tier set change. I don't know. Ho now, Holy Paladin is still similar. Uh, Holy Paladin is what is this? The Divine Light. Not the Divine Light. What is it called? Um, I can't remember the AoE spell. It it doesn't really it doesn't really affect it. Holy Priest got um, doesn't really affect them much as well. I'm not sure about this priest. Rest of Shaman's healing healing rain. I guess Rest of Shaman is the most similar one to Rest of Druid, which is actually really interesting to see, just because. Uh, I feel the rest of shamans and rest of druids were kind of filling the same spot in a way because they're both both of their masteries are like progression masteries where people take more damage you're going to heal for more and now you got tier sets where you where you have like AOE healing spells that just do more healing uh, so I think it's kind of actually interesting to see that um, but I think I think it's I think it's overall overall in all Considering all the things about tier 20, I feel that it's still better to have some change than over what tier 19 was. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, Blixen. I, I like change between tier sets, like I said. Just tier 20 is a little bit too much of a change. Because like, like we said, the downtime for effort efflorescence is very important if you have low downtime it's not really going to be much you're just going to fall behind on the meters or logs or for whatever other reason it's it's true like the like like a, I guess the best way to put tier 20 spec is kind of like high risk high reward kind of thing where yeah. where if you so overall tier 20 is harder to manage and most likely you won't output as much healing except for certain fights desolate host spirit realm comes into mind where you actually can play sephalorescence and like most of the people are going to be inside it and i'm pretty sh like i'm actually 100 percent sure your tier 20 is going to be healing more than your tier 19 purely for the fact that there's 10 people in desolate host at least you split the raid in 10 10 uh, or 9 11 depending on how you do it um and you're most likely going to be running germination. Desolate host is more like a resto druid fight, a bigger five man fight. Um, because once there's like 10 people, you can actually germinate everyone and, uh, and everyone's grouped up. And your tier 19 four set does not work well when you have everyone, when you have germination on everyone. Because you can easily achieve that in desolate host spirit realm so you can i have you can easily achieve ro like all of your rejuvenations rolling on targets and your tier 20 tier 19 force that has nowhere to proc or it's like it's just not going to do not just going not going to do a same effect that tier 20 force is going to do. that's the one fight that i really i guess harjatan can be kind of set to it as well harjatan let me, let me just see the bosses here just to see where tier 20 actually could be used over tier 19. Sure. Yeah. Tier 20 would be Harjatan and Sisters to a point, uh, Mistress maybe, depending on how well your group stays stacked up. Uh, Desolate Host, like you said, Maiden, because she only goes from side to side, so that's preferable. viable. Mm -hmm. But most other bosses, I would probably say not really going to be useful, or as useful, because there's just too much movement, you're not really grouped up enough. It's true. I would, I would go exactly, exactly what you said. Uh, so there is Inquisitor is a possibility, but that would require a different strat to use it. Yeah, no, it's a hundred percent. There's another big question a lot of people are asking is that once I swap over to uh, once oh I got tier twenty four set. I got tier twenty four set. Uh, do I still use the legendary shoulders? Like we can we can move a bit into the legendary thing. Do I still use legendary shoulders? And what legendaries do I use? Mm -hmm. I would say no to the shoulders. Yeah, the shoulders actually lose a lot of value. 
Uh, I'm using t the shoulders right now because I have T19 Forset, but um, the shoulders lose a lot of value once they don't have the T19 Forset. They actually, T19 Forset works really, really well with, uh, with the legendary shoulders, but the best legendaries, like at the end of the day, Valence is still number one legendary. I think it's actually number one legendary for every healer or very close to every healer. Uh, so that's it's one of uh, Holy Paladin's biz. I know that. <laughs> so it's like I'm pretty sure it's biz for everyone else as well. So Valence is like no matter what, it's going to be your number one choice. And if you have Valence, then uh, you you're kind of lucky. You don't. Uh, you kind of got one slot figured out already. But the second slot, like I mentioned, uh, like in Blixen mentioned as well, uh, shoulders lose a lot of value with tier, without tier 19, four set, and with tier 20, you kind of have like a choice. You have a choice of three legendaries. Let, let me just... Uh, you have a choice of three legendaries. These legendaries are like mostly are going to be kind of similar in the HPS that you're going to gain, and they're going to be very situation based on what you need. So you have like you have the neck, um, you have the neck, you have the belt, uh, and then you have the soul of the arch druid. But soul of the arch druid with tier twenty four set is going to work very. It's going to add extra. <laughs> how do I say? It? extra complexity to the build so the way the soul of the arch shrewd works is that every time you uh, swift man the same same kind of thing as tier 24 set every time you swift man so you got like an interaction there as well with swift man straight away you're gonna your healings are going to increase your next healing spell is going to increase in, in 90 percent cases you'll want to use wild growth which is going to be increased by 75 percent uh, on top of like on top of if you have a hots on the people that's also going to add mastery healing so it's it's like really really powerful but like i said the problem is that you're going to swift mend you're going to have to make sure your efflorescence is healing quite a quite a lot of people like you know to get some kind of decent healing and then you're going to have 15 seconds i actually have two set very low two set that i can kind of showcase uh, so it's like if you have the soul of the arch druid, let me just equip this. Do I have the shoulders? There you go. So let's go. So you have your, you're gonna swift man. You have 14 seconds to cast your wild gold. You have to make sure your efflorescence is placed down. And then you kind of have to make sure there's enough damage coming. Like what if there's no damage here at all? You kind of have to wait. And if there's no damage at all, you just have to cast Wild Growth, like in those 15 seconds. Um, and if you if you cast something else, like Rejuvenation, your HPS is going to be lower because the, the highest HPS you can achieve is casting Wild Growth on it. So now you have two things to worry about if you use the Soul of the Arch Druid. I feel that you can pull it off, um, but it's going to be much, much harder. So the three legendaries that I mentioned, instead of Legendary Shoulders for Tier 20 build, is Pretus, Legendary Neck, waste the light bloom waste and and or soul of the arch druid depending on how comfortable you are with managing multiple spells um, it's basically depending on how comfortable you think you're going to do well because if you if you if you have if you're struggling with efflorescence of time without the ring you most likely should not be using soul of the arch druid just opt in for pride as if you feel you're going to die mythic sisters comes into mind if you have those glaives i don't know if you've seen the if you've seen the Mythic Sisters fight um, uh, on like streams and like that, the Blixen is like the glaives just coming in and like you're, you can you take one take and then there's another damage coming in from somewhere else and you can just die. And Pridas can really, it's actually advisable to use Pridas for Mythic Sisters just because the glaives is the number one uh, killer. If you feel comfortable, you can go with Dark Titans. I feel there's a lot of tank damage in. Uh, in Tomb of Sargeras. I feel like Paladins like, uh, like having a really good time with the tank damage is coming out, especially on a lot of boss like Kil'jaeden and things like that. But uh, if you're using tier 20, you don't have to use the shoulders, you can use uh, the waist and priders. Uh, that's actually not saying that you can't not use uh, can't, you cannot use the shoulders you can still use shoulders with tier 20 
but it's in very niche scenarios. I don't really think it would actually be worth it at the moment. Uh, I don't think it's actually gonna be worth it. But another another question another question about the about the rest of Drew Talents, which is actually something that uh, I get a lot is um, is I have tier 20 so let me just swap out uh, the gear to my usual gear I have tier 20 I have t tier 24 set should I be still using germination as my number one go-to spell as a restoration druid because I'm so used to running germination all the time with tier 19 four set and legendary shoulders um, what do, what do I use basically the big misconception here is that tier 20 doesn't really it it like it it doesn't mean you have to use spring blossoms tier 20 does not have a uh, monopoly on spring blossoms it's not like you're, you're gonna be using tier 20 you have to use spring blossoms absolutely not uh, like i think blixen said as well about the fights where you should be using where you should be using uh, spring blossoms or you should be using germination like i feel karat is a germination fight for most of the times um, I feel the monarch inquisition can be both and I 100% feel that fallen avatar you will be running tier 20 with germination absolutely germination there is arguments being made that spring blossoms could be or even tier 20 could be quite bad for fallen avatar that you might even swap out to tier 19 for it even if it is lower item level um, but that's yet, I, I really need to kind of test it out. But Fallen Avatar really doesn't seem to favor Spring Blossom stacking because the boss goes from left to right and there's a lot of movement. There's, I mean, the only time you could actually really use uh, tier, 20 f uh, for, uh, tier 24 piece with Avatar, with Fallen Avatar, is when you're prepared to actually replace your swift your efflorescence after 10 seconds of the buff are gone. Because you most likely will only get around 10 seconds of people standing in the efflorescence and then they're going to move out. And Fallen Avatar is actually quite a long mana intensive fight. So I don't think you'll be able to juggle your efflorescences left and right like this. And it might be just uh, requiring too much uh, too much micromanagement. But what was, I, what was I else going to talk about? I guess we covered I guess we covered um, legendaries at least to some extent. Uh, I guess there is something to be said. I know there's a lot of people who were saying before with Chameleon Song, uh, the legendary helm. So that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the proc helm, the RNG god helm, that you have to hope that it's going to proc. Sometimes it gives you zero proc. Sometimes it can give you like five in a row. It depends if you feel lucky. Um, like I could almost see that being as one kind, just because your legendary helm is going to give you a lot of uh, intellect. And uh, if you're really looking at like the most stats given per legendary, it's the chest, believe it or not, it's the chest and then the helm are number one and two respectively. So, but just using the helm, you're actually gaining a lot of stats if you don't care about the secondaries. Um, and for fights, I guess for progression fights, for like, I don't know if you've seen the, the method, Maiden's kill, um, but in no, I saw the method avatar kill. Oh yeah, they've they've killed that. That was um, that was that was uh, like it was seemed, seemed like a holy pal like holy paladin was just in both videos that I've seen. Holy paladin was on top of meters by quite a quite a margin, and they didn't have that many mana issues. I think they had. I think there's a lot of single target healing at the start, or they. I, I'm not even actually quite sure. Maybe the Maybe the Paladin gets Blessing or something like that, but I've seen that was like a Holy Paladin fight. And Resto Druids are good for that as well because there's movement. Anytime there's movement, Resto Druids are going to be doing alright. But on Maiden's fight, first of all, Maiden's is like mana intensive. There's a lot of healing. And most of the time, the, like the health bars of people was like 30%. They were actually staying at 30%, 30 to 40% for quite a long time. So that's when you actually, first of all, you're deep-rooted your deep rooted so deep rooted golden trait is going to kill I actually can't move this. Uh, when the rejuvenation regard the wild goat heals a target below 35% health is duration is refreshed. So that's what Rusty Druid is so what I've seen like the method like part of Druid Stick was doing like 1.7 million healing which is like literally insane. That's actually insane. Like that's almost breaking 2 million for like a long fight. 
so one of the reasons was because the people were staying really low and I could almost see an opportunity for the chameleon song hand because the shoulders even with the, even even though part of the truth was doing t194 set if the people don't get uh, brought back up to full hp shoulders becomes almost kind of useless so you could almost see a use for chameleon song just purely for the fact if it procs it is a mana saving tool because rejuvenation is going to be 30 percent less uh, base mana you're, it's going to increase healing by 50% for rejuvenation and going to increase your overall healing by 15 for all your healing spells. So it's like you kind of pray, you know, it's like you're low mana or there's a lot of healing always to be d done. And like anytime it procs, it's like, oh my God, it's amazing. I could almost see that being as a viable option if you don't need the pride as if you feel very confident about not dying and if you don't really need the dark titan's advice which is the legend of belt if you have good paladins in the in the in the, in the raid because at the end of the day pal the paladin is going to handle the tanks and there's going to be more than plenty of tank healing acquired in tomb of Sagaris. even heroic normal depending on like the tank damage is through the roof i feel there's a lot there's a way more than it was in nighthold uh way more i don't know how you feel about the tank damage in uh... the tank damage is definitely incredible there's a lot of tank damage going on, and I know that as a Holy Paladin player now, since I swapped over. But the tank damage is immense. I can't usually top them up with one spell. I have to use like three or four spells. Where in Nighthold, I was still like, boop, full health. So our two set, or our four set, sorry. The Paladin's four set is going to be viable. Far. But as far as druids go, just got to keep the rate up best they can and, let, and hope their healers are doing their part in the healing otherwise people are going to end up dead yeah no i it's i agree with that i agree like, like i said i think uh, i think paladins have plenty of work to do. you can see my actually the video my hearts are still procking all the time I don't, I don't know if you can hear that but uh this is what i was talking about this is what i was i didn't like unintentionally talked about deep rooted so like i said your rejuvenation uh, gold has a when the target is below 25 percent hp duration is refreshed so technically if your target is always low you don't even need to place rejuvenation they'll just constantly refresh themselves uh, <laughs> so technically like um, like i actually mentioned before i consider i consider resto druids and resto shamans to be a progression type healers because their mastery their mastery works very similar ways as in if the person is below certain uh, threshold they're going to be healing more so the same way druid mastery works the more hots you have on the person and by more hots i mean cultivation proc and by cultivation proc i mean they have to go below 60 percent hp so the more damage they take the more hots you have on the target the more healing you want to do and the same with the rest of shamans uh, and uh, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of similarities just basically on the healing uh, efflorescence and healing when and things like that. But I guess we can move on. I guess we can move on to, uh, I guess the big, bigger questions, the big question. I don't know if it's the big question. Are rest of Druids still kind of, um, how are they comparing to other healers? Um, I still like them. They, they, for me, they definitely still have a raid spot mandatory race spot because people were still going to be moving through a lot of fights and who better to heal than a resto druid on the move right but as far as raw output raw hps they are falling behind now on most fights and because they've been nerfed so much and it, again tier 20 Four set. If you have bad uptime on air fluorescence, you're gonna not do as much healing, and that's flat out. Whereas pretty much all the other healers, they're still gonna maintain their healing. It's I yeah no hundred percent the the nerf to rest of druids was quite um, was quite can definitely feel it. You can definitely you can, can definitely, definitely feel it. Definitely <laughs> feel it at the very start of. Uh, 
7.25 I think every, every rest of you would actually notice the a dip uh, in their healing they're like I'm doing the same things and I'm like my my healing is like 200k less or something like that so it was definitely a noticeable decrease um, in healing I'm just looking at uh, I'm just looking at some of the charts for the mythic uh, for the mythic rankings let me see if I can put it put it up on the screens um, so this is just um, walk up logs which is definition be taken as a, as a like a go-to chat for how healers are doing at the moment um, but yeah I see the two the two priest classes the two priest classes are doing really well rest of druids are kind of in the middle holy paladins it doesn't really matter because uh, they'll get a spot no matter what because of the tank healing rest of shamans they usually will get a tank uh, will get a spot uh, as well and uh, miss Wheel monks are kind of below I, I feel miss Wheel monks mm, I feel they kind of got left out in in the progression race I don't I haven't seen a miss Wheel monk in the top kills uh, I feel like they can't do it I just really don't know if you would bring a miss Wheel monk over rest of druid uh, like I wouldn't personally I wouldn't even bring Holy a miss weaver I wouldn't bring a miss weaver over a priest or a druid if I had to pick my four healers, it would be Holy Priest, Holy Pally, Rest of Druid, Shaman. I would not bring a Mistweaver myself because I've seen what they can do and they're in what I've seen, they're leagues behind the other healers. I wouldn't as far say as raw output. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's like it's actually quite close enough to Rest of Druid. It's just because um Rest of Druids f uh, fit into the niche of movement healing i'm not saying that miss weavers can't heal on movement they actually absolutely can heal on movement and they absolutely can heal on like when you have to stand when you can't move it's just like on a really heavy movement fight the rest of jury is going to heal more than uh, uh, miss weaver so it's a little like it's a little like that um oh yeah i was showing the chat there can see the chat but yeah I like right now priests are doing really well like I'm actually gonna do a video about this as well later on so I don't want to dwell too much on the fact I feel the rest of druids are still in a really in a really decent spot I, I at the end of the day if you're actually in a really progression guild rest of druids are actually in a really good spot because if you look at the mythic plus kills if I have it for example I don't know if I do uh, if you look at mythic plus kills like let's say for method for example so you can see arrest of druid was in the Jaden kill uh, you can see two rest of druids were in their fallen avatar kill you can see there were two rest of druids actually three rest of druids in the maiden kill uh, mistress was one desolate host was one from what i remember yeah sister of the moon was uh, won two paladins but that was before Sisters was nerfed as well. And it doesn't really matter about Hajitan or the Monarch Inquisition, they're both the same. But if you're in real progression guild, rest of uh, Druids are going to shine where there is really a lot of damage, where people are staying low and where there's some kind of a movement happening. And they're going to do well. Like a lot of people uh, will, s if you're doing like heroic, if you're overhealing, if you have like five healers for your heroic runs with 20, 25 people or something you are just not going to be able to compete just because your heals are going to be sniped so it's still not an indication like and then you, you probably like move on to mythic and then your, your raid leader is going to say we're going to have to go with four healers here we're going to have to drop a healer there's going to be some some uh, some movement involved and you're like wow i'm like the rest of jude is doing it way better now so that's the kind of that's the kind of mentality that's happening right now but um uh, yeah so i guess i don't know if there's anything else that i really would like to cover let me let me see what did we do today um rest of druid tier 19 tier 20s rest of druid legendaries how are rest of druids actually hanging on in the in the progression race i guess i guess in really top level rest of druids are doing pretty okay the biggest They're issue right there yeah 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 do it like uh, among the what is it the mandatory holy paladin and resto shaman i feel for a lot of fights resto druid is still gonna make into it 
but um, I guess the biggest change is the tier nine, tier twenty. The tier twenty game style is just going to be, it's going to be a big change for a lot of people, and hopefully, hopefully this video is kind of, is kind of helped out with some of the, some of the logic behind tier 20 when you should be using it if like if you should be using it if you're having troubles with efflorescence overall like if you're not placing efflorescence or if you're not using swift man then you should re either really really get weak cores that just are in your face just like there's no like you can't see where you are unless you use swift man the efflorescence like these kind of weak cores or just not even use tier 20 like I said at the like I said at the very start of the video about tier twenty, it is a lot easier to get higher item level tier twenty than it's going to be get than it's going to be getting tier nineteen. So eventually everyone is going to swap over to tier twenty and tier twenty is going to be the norm. I'm looking forward to the seven point three tier twenty one set bonuses, which are not released yet for us to do it. I think they released ones for Holy Paladin. Uh, I think it was something like. I think it was you, know, you transfer more healing again to the beacon targets and like your blessing of protection is the cooldown is reduced the blessing the cooldown of the blessing protection reduced if you use it on on tanks or something on those lines either way it was like zero hps increase with tier four set but you know you gotta save your tank um, i haven't seen the other ones but i can't wait to see what tier 21 is going to look like on rest of Jewel. But I think this is going to be, uh, I think this is going to be enough for this little short kind of discussion uh, video about the tier 20, tier 19. Let me know what you think about the video. Uh, let me know what kind of questions you have for Resto Druids. How you feel about Resto Druids in 7.25? Do you feel you're doing? Do you, do you feel Resto Druids Resto Druids are doing well? How do you feel about the tier 20 efflorescence uh, tier set? Do you feel it should be changed? Would you rather go back to the tier 19 where you had to do nothing? Or do you actually like a change in tiers? I personally like a change in tiers. I might feel, I feel maybe that efflorescence wasn't the best way to go for Resto Druids, considering Resto Druids all about that movement. And your tier set is all binded into a, like a stationary spell, which is a little bit, I don't know, maybe not Resto Druidy. But like I said, thank you for watching this little video. Thank you, Blixen, for coming over and, and providing some of the insight into like Holy Paladins and things like that. Um, I would like to say goodbye and like leave a comment how you feel, and um, and I'll see you next time, Blixen. If you bye, yeah, bye. <laughs> thank you, Blixen. Thank you for coming down, and I'll see you guys later on.